Welcome back, I'm Dave, and in this video, we're going to go through the derivative of an inverse trig function. So this one solely focuses on arc sine of x, which is also known as sine to the minus one. Uh, it just purely depends on what course you're doing. They are exactly the same meaning, but just slightly different notation. We've got four questions that we'll run through. This video will solely focus on arc sine. If you want to look in the description, you'll find the links to the other two videos, or even click one of the tabs above, and that will take you to one now. Here's the four questions that I said we'll go through. They get progressively more difficult as we work down here, and you can see that there'll be a product involved here, and then we have some sort of use of chain rule in this one as well. If you wanna have a go at them, pause the video, take a screenshot, work through them, and then you can see if you get the answer right when I work through them. Remember, arc sine of x is the inverse of sine, and so is sine to the minus one. They're exactly the same meaning. So in most textbooks, they'll tell you that the derivative of arc sine of x is just this expression here, one over root one minus x squared. However, what happens if f of x is something different, not just x, like x squared or two x or three x squared? Well, we have to remember that, yes, this rule does apply that it's one over root one minus f of x squared, but then we must also times by the derivative of this f of x. And I'll just briefly pause there for the proof of why it is one over root one minus x squared. And to save time, I won't go through that right now, but you can take a screenshot and work through it in your own time, or you can hang around to the end of the video and I'll just work through that in a few minutes. Okay, question one. So we have to differentiate arc sine of three x squared. So on the right here, I've just reminded you that we need to remember that if it's got a function of x, then not only do we square that on the denominator under the radical, but we also have to multiply through by the derivative. So I'll just keep that up there to remind you. So this is going to result in um, one over root one minus. Now the f of x is three x all squared. So it's three x squared, sorry, all squared and uh, then multiplied by the derivative of that. So that's gonna be multiplied by six X. So if we just tidy that up a little tiny bit, it's gonna be six X over root one minus nine X to the four. And that is the end of that first question. Okay, question two. So now we're going to change the X over four to actually look a little bit different. We're gonna have it as one quarter times x. You'll see why in just a moment, that'll be helpful. So we're gonna look at the right hand side, we've got one over fx, so we need to square that on the denominator below the radical, and then times by the derivative. So we'll end up with then, one over root one minus, now this value squared is gonna be a quarter squared, so a quarter x all squared. So that'll end up in one over 16 x squared. Now multiplying through by the derivative of this, is just gonna be multiplying through by a quarter. So when we multiply by a quarter, we'll actually uh, be timesing by a quarter like this, okay? So therefore then we'll bring the one over four to the front. Now, so one over four times one over root, one minus x squared over 16. The question that will ask you to, to represent it as a singular sort of uh, radical or fraction. So you can bring in this four, okay? Because four is the same as saying root 16. So you could say one over root 16 times by one over root one minus x squared over 16. Now, one of your laws of radicals is that root A times root B is root AB, right? So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna times this in because it's like the two radicals times together. So when you do that, one times one on the numerator, which should be one, and root 16 times root, uh, sorry, uh, one will be just 16 and root 16 times x squared over 16 is going to be minus x squared. So that is our final result for question two. Question three, we have a product here. So what I'll do is I'll just draw a dotted line down there. We can call this u and this one v, and we can use product rule. So therefore uh, I'll call, if, that, if I call that u, then u is equal to x, 
u prime, which is du by dx, is equal to 1. Now, v, therefore, would be arc sine x, and v prime, which is dv by dx, is just simply going to be the formula that we just sort of saw on a couple of pages ago, which is 1 over root 1 minus x squared. This expression up here, but as this is only x, then this is just x, and the derivative of x is just 1, so we don't really need this because it would just be times by 1. So uh, what we'll do now is we put all of this into the product rule. So the product, so let's just bring this down here. So the product rule states then that it will be v du, so v times derivative of u plus u times the derivative of v. And we're just going to take everything that we've just found here in this white circle. So v is arc sine x derivative of u is just one so we don't just times by one plus u which is x times the derivative of v which is one over this so it's gonna be times by one we can put that there just so you can see what's happening and then it's over root one minus x squared okay and that is the end so if we just get rid of that one because that looks a little bit silly and there we go there's our result for question three question four so this time we've got arc sine all squared um with 2x so another way of writing that would be arc sine 2x and this is all squared so this is a chain rule problem so what we'll do is when we want to differentiate that we're going to times by the power we'll just put, leave the square brackets for the moment everything inside the bracket stays exactly the same for now we take one off the power, so that will go down to one, but now we have to multiply by the derivative of that bracket. So the derivative of that bracket is the derivative of arc sine 2x. If we're actually going to refer to here, this is going to be that 2x, so then we're going to have to do 2x all squared, then times by the derivative of 2x. So uh, let's do that now then. So it will be one over root 1 minus, now 2x all squared is going to be 4x squared, and the derivative of the 2x, this here, is going to be just simply 2. So just combining all of that together then now, 4 arc sine 2x times by 1 over root 1 minus 4x squared. And that is question four complete. Okay, so congratulations if you worked through those uh, questions and you got them right. I'm just gonna come back to the proof. Um, basically, this this graph here was the uh, representation of arc sine and sine. So remember, they are inverse functions of each other, so they reflect in the line y equals x. Anyway, the proof comes from saying that if you let y equal the inverse of sine x, and then imagine taking the sine of both sides. So when you take the sine of arc sine, that, that will cancel out, leaving you with uh, just x. It's like taking the function of uh, its inverse function. Uh, but on the left, you'll end up with sine y. Now, if you differentiate the left-hand side with respect to x, you have to differentiate the right-hand side with respect to x. But this is an implicit relationship here on the left because it's in terms of y. So if you watch my video on implicit uh, implicit differentiation, you'll understand then that what we do is, it's a chain rule uh, problem really. Uh, you differentiate normally with respect to y and that will give us cosine y, but then you have to multiply by dy by dx. And that's the great part because we just rearrange to make that the subject in a moment. On the right hand side, we differentiate with respect to x and we get one. Um, now I'm gonna divide through by this cosine here. Um, okay, and at that point there, you might think, right, where do I go? And this is where the Pythagorean identity comes in. So I'm just going to scooch over to the left here. And we have this Pythagorean identity, which we've seen quite a few times. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But in a unit circle, it is cosine y plus cosine, sorry, cosine squared y plus sine squared y is equal to one. Now, normally it's in terms of x, but because we are working in terms of y, it is exactly the same for y. So then if we move the sine x 
uh, to the right hand side. So we're going to subtract sine squared y from both sides. And then we square root both sides. We are left with just cosine y on the left. Now that's great because we can now substitute that in to the denominator here. So therefore then we, this is where the root comes in. So we have one minus sine squared y on the denominator. And there's one more little substitution we're gonna do is at the very, very beginning of the question, we referred to sine y as being x. So therefore then sine squared would be x squared. And that is where this lovely little x squared comes from. So that is a proof. And I think it's quite important if you're doing this course that you should really know where that comes from. So derivative of inverse trig functions. Is there any more questions you'd like me to go through? Uh, would you like to pass exam questions? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.